Good morning. It is Friday, and uh, so we're coming to a conclusion with our study this week of God Supplies Our Every Need. Um, I uh, will be finishing up with, uh, again, staying in the 12th chapter of Luke, but uh, beginning in verse 22 and going through 34. I um, would invite you to remember that we do have two worship services this Sunday. Uh, one will be at 9 and the other will be at 1030. Uh, we're, we're debating uh, shifting back to our old early service time of 815. And so we're going to have a, uh, <coughs> instead of 9, so we'll be having a a survey that we're going to ask people uh, to fill out, which would be their preference. And uh, if you are interested in that but can't be there to do that survey, uh, I would invite you to uh, call the church um, and leave a message. And uh, we will get that, and we will add that to the uh, numbers. It, uh, uh, I would be more than happy to go back to the 815 time. And uh, that's fine with me. We felt that as we were coming into summer, when we were starting the second service up again, perhaps it would be better to start at 9. But as we're hitting this point where we do have one adult Sunday school class that's meeting and uh, uh, probably we'll have another, um, if in fact we shift back the time, that will begin. So uh, there are good reasons to do that. Uh, but we would like to have a sense of the preference of, of uh, the folks who will be there to worship with us. So uh, keep that in mind as well. I would invite you now to join with me <coughs> as we begin the invocation. Almighty God, in whom I find life, health, and strength, and through whose mercy I am clothed and fed, grant unto me a thankful and faithful heart in the name and spirit of Christ. Amen. Um. <clears throat> So today's segment, again, <coughs> in my particular Bible, uh, it's the New Revised Standard Version, heads this up, uh, this section as, Do Not Worry. And uh, we've talked uh, this week a little bit about fear already, and so I think it's uh, appropriate for us to think in terms of the kind of things that cause us to worry. We don't necessarily think of that as fear, but of course it is, and uh, it is a fear about the future. We worry about what's coming. We worry about what's going to happen. We worry about our health. We worry about our kids. We worry about our parents. We worry about each other. And um, these are all things that are natural parts, really, of the human condition. However, God says uh, there is much more to life than that, and uh, and he reminds us, that he ultimately is in charge. So let's uh, let's read this, the words of Jesus, and uh, let's consider the, how they apply to our lives. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither reap nor sow. <clears throat> they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do a small thing such as that, <clears throat> why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, 
where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Oh, also, <coughs> sorry, my throat is still doing some very strange things lately. Anyway, as we go back and we kind of work our way through this passage, there's a, there is an awful lot here. Um, <coughs> the first thing I want to, I kind of, as an overall thing, uh, obviously, if we're going to live, we have to eat and drink, you know. If we're going to live, we have to clothe ourselves, um, or at least be clothed. And those are those are really a part of life. And so I don't think, I don't think that what Jesus is saying here is ignore that. Obviously, if you ignore eating and drinking, you're going to die. If you, in, in, you know, if you ignore way, wearing clothing... You're probably going to, well, if you're in New York State, eventually you'll freeze to death. So, you, you know, you have these natural uh, uh, elements of life. And what I think Jesus is saying here is not, um, you're not going to have to eat and you're not going to have to drink and you're not going to have to wear clothes. I think what Jesus is saying here is that those are things that will be taken care of, you know, uh, one way or another you will have food to eat. One way or another, you will have something to drink. One way or another, you will have clothing to wear. And uh, and what he's talking about here is being absorbed by the concerns as to how that's going to happen. And we all have, uh, we've all been there, haven't we? You know, it, it uh, it's something that, <clears throat> um, as a pastor, I've certainly seen with people coming and, and looking for help. Uh, presently at the church here, we have a food cupboard that sits out on the porch of the Wesley House, and people bring food to it, and uh, people come and stop by and uh, and get things as they need them. And so, uh, you know, don't think for a minute that that's not a means by which God is supplying a need for food in some people's lives. So, you know, again, we see that physical example out there, which is a great example of how God does that. Now, that doesn't mean that somebody isn't going to have to plow the field. Somebody isn't going to have to plant the seed. Somebody isn't going to have to, you know, watch over the crop and reap the harvest. That's a, you know, if there's going to be food, those sorts of things happen. But when it becomes our primary obsession, then we've got a problem. When it becomes a, a, an obsession of our thoughts, we have a real problem. <clears throat> and so as, as we go down through, kind of think of things in, in that respect. Uh, so he, Jesus says to his disciples, again, um, you know, he's got this huge crowd around, <clears throat> but it sounds like he's kind of, you know, moving between speaking to the crowd and speaking to his disciples. <clears throat> Throat's a little bit tight today, and I'm going to be yawning and coughing. I'm sorry. Uh, he says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Okay, so there's the, there's the initial and the overarching premise. Don't worry about your life. Live, obviously, but don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what's coming next. Don't worry about, you know, God has the capacity to speak to us at appropriate times to take us where we need to be for our life to have meaning and purpose and to be extended to the extent that our days are numbered by God. Um, I, I'm not saying God, you know, says, okay, I'm going to give you 27 years and you I'm going to give 93 years to and you 78, you know. Um, God doesn't, I don't think God does that in that respect. Uh, if he did, he'd be right in doing it. He's God. But I don't believe that's how he works. I really don't. And uh, and so he knows the number of our days, uh, the things that happen that uh, will lead to us uh, in Christ going home uh, to be with the Lord. And you know, just a quickie on that, uh, heaven is not our eternal home. If you read in Revelation, you very quickly will realize there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That heaven and earth are the heaven of uh, you know an atmosphere and a new world, so to speak that is coming um, after, the, uh, after the return of Christ. Um, so uh, our home is not so much heaven as the dwelling place of God as actually being in 
the presence of the Lord. That's home. So, you know, when I say, you know, that day that we go home, I'm talking about that time when we are reunited in the presence of the Lord himself. So, you know, our lives are there. God knows the beginning, God knows the end, and God knows every moment in between. And so he says, don't worry about this stuff. I've got this. I know what's going to happen. And you might not like some of it. And you may not agree with some of it. But I've got this. And, and so that the first word that he speaks to them, <clears throat> do not worry about your life. Um, how many people today are worried about their life? Uh, one of the biggest issues we've got going right now with the COVID and the, uh, and the vaccinations and the masking and all the embattlement around all of those things is a fear of our lives or fear for our lives, I should say. And so we're living in an awful lot of fear. We're living in a world uh, and a time of worry beyond words. And, uh, and God says, cut it out. Now, that doesn't mean we don't take care of our health. That doesn't mean that we uh, do what we can to ensure that we don't pass on something to someone else. doesn't mean any of that stuff. But it does mean that constantly worrying about it is probably more detrimental than helpful. Act according to what you feel like the Lord is, is leading you into and uh, what he's telling you to do. Act with your own life. But don't let this uh, fear completely destroy every other aspect of your life. And that's one of the things that it very clearly <coughs> has done and is doing. So he says, don't worry about your life. And then he gets down to some specifics. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about your body, what you're going to wear. Um, these are things that are going to be there as a part of life. Uh, worrying about it is not going to change it at all. Certainly working for it <clears throat> may, may be an improvement. You, uh, you know, I, I don't think that we're called to uh, uh, sit back and be waited on all the time in our lives. Um, but he, uh, he says, you know, don't worry about this stuff. Don't let worry control your life. Because worry excludes the presence of God. And uh, he says, uh, for life is more than food, the body is more than clothing. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Because he says, consider the ravens. Now, ravens are uh, a very, very intelligent bird. Probably second only in intelligence to maybe some of the parrots. They're very, very intelligent birds. Uh, that was known, has been known for a very long time. Certainly was known in those days. However, they were unclean. They were an unclean bird. They were a bird that was not to be eaten. They were a bird that was seen as unclean, which may not necessarily have been evil per se, but uh, they, they were uh, not, certainly not respected or necessarily appreciated. You think about ravens and crows, they eat carrion, there's just, you know, there's all sorts of things, and they were considered unclean. Isn't it interesting? That Jesus goes straight for an unclean animal as his example, an unclean bird. He says, consider the ravens. <clears throat> they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them. So if God takes care of an unclean animal, which, you know, there are definite uh, repercussions against in the Old Testament, you know, and certainly uh, those who are listening to Jesus would have known that. Uh, if God takes care of this unclean bird, this raven, uh, how much more will he value that which is not unclean? That which, in point of fact, he has claimed as his own child. That which is you and that which is me. You know, and so when you start looking at it from that perspective, it's like God takes care of the unclean stuff. Don't you think he's going to take care of you? And, uh, and at whatever level is necessary in this life. And again, as Christians, we understand that this life is, 
is a part of eternity to be sure once we're you know once we have received christ we're we're living in eternity and yeah the physical body may die and and it's a, a hor horrific ripping asunder of what god made us to be this perfect combination of the spiritual and the physical uh, these two things made one. Notice it's not just in that 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 example is set, is it? You know, the two made one in marriage, um, <clears throat> receiving Christ into our hearts, the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. It's it's kind of two becoming one. That's one of the uh, one of the concepts that God has presented us with in in this life. Well, we were born to be this perfect combination of a physical body with a spiritual heart, you know, and a spiritual center. And so um, the uh, the reality is that, that ripping that asunder is like this horrific um, antithetical reality to what God created us to be. And so that's why the resurrection is so important to us as Christians. You know, so we we go through our life and uh, and we see that reality. <clears throat> but what Jesus is saying here is, if God takes care of the unclean, how much more is He going to take care of the clean and uh, those whom He has claimed as His own children? And so, whatever happens in that time, we do not walk out of the presence of God. Of how much more value are you than the birds, and especially the unclean birds? They uh, now, and it's also interesting. He says, you know, they don't have any storehouses or any barns, like the foolish guy that we talked about yesterday, right? You know, I mean, there's a shot there in that, I think. And uh, and then he goes on and he says, you know, can any of you, because he's taking us from worry about food and drink. And uh, clothing, and then he takes us uh, to the real worry, uh, which is death. And he says, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? Well, that's a rhetorical question, because of course the answer is no. In point of fact, typically, uh, the more we worry, uh, it is probably going to detract from the, uh, the, the span of our lives. And, you know, it builds stress in us. It does all kinds of terrible things. And, uh, and so, you know, Jesus is saying here, don't, you know, it, it, just as you shouldn't worry about the kind of things that are necessary in life, don't worry about death itself either, because you cannot change that. Now, certainly we can, you know, we can change uh, by moving from unhealthy habits to healthy habits. But is that worry? No, that's action. And, and that often can have a very major uh, result in our longevity. But worrying, no. In fact, it detracts. So he goes on, he says, If then you're not able to do so small a thing as that, add a minute to your life. Why do you worry about the rest? Worry, you know, the worry in the most significant aspect of our lives, which is our death, in terms of, you know, what we worry about. And, and he says, uh, and you can't make any difference with that by worrying. So why do you spend your time worrying about the other stuff, which is far simpler, far less significant, and uh, and far more uh, obtainable in this life? Consider the lilies, how they grow, neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Pretty straightforward. But it... If God, so, <coughs> if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you? How much more does he appreciate you than the unclean raven? How much more does he appreciate you than these flowers that are there and gone? You know, how much more does God appreciate you than um, you even appreciate you? And, and I would say a lot. God appreciates you, loves you, cares for you more than you care for yourself. And always will have ultimately your best interests in mind.
because he has your salvation and your eternal life in mind in everything that he has done. Uh, you know, he says, uh, he, and then Jesus says, you guys really don't have a lot of faith. You know, oh, ye of little faith. And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying for the nations of the world that strive after all these things. You know, it, it is it is them. And, and again, Jesus is specifically talking to a bunch of Jews here who ought to know some of this stuff. You know, he says the rest of the world does this deep concern constantly. You are God's people. And God is caring for you. Um, and he says instead, strive for God's kingdom. These things will be given to you as well. And so what do we do to strive for God's kingdom? Well, we work for it. I'm not just talking about a job. I'm talking about efforts and prayer, efforts in, in living a Christian life, efforts in reaching out to other people and bringing them to the Lord, or at least showing them, exposing them to the reality of Jesus Christ in your own life. And this will, uh, you know, this will do things. Here's a concrete example from my own life. I uh, <clears throat> recently, well, in the last couple of years, had been meeting uh, kind of regularly with a young man, and uh, and we would go out to lunch, and we were there pretty consistently uh, at this place. And um, so one day we we were there, and uh, something had happened the last time we were there that was. Um, there's a person who had uh, mental emotional issues and um, he, uh, uh, well, not he actually, but anyway, uh, was loud. The person was loud and uh, uh, the, we received an apology um, from the, the store or the restaurant manager owner. And, uh, and I said to him, I said, don't you dare apologize. Uh, I think it is the fact that this person felt comfortable bringing this other person, knowing that this could happen, um, to this place suggests to me that this is a place that I want to frequent. And I, I said, uh, uh, these are folks uh, who are very much in need of this kind of thing. And I said, so don't you dare apologize to me. I said, it is, uh, in, in some respects, that was an encouragement to me. And we'd been there, as I said, probably, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, maybe a dozen times. And the next time we went in and we ordered and we ate and we talked. And then as we were getting ready to leave, we found out there was no bill. Um, that someone had taken care of our bill. And... Uh, uh, you know, and I, I, assuming that it probably came out of that experience, was it the owner himself? Was it the person who brought the uh, uh, other person in? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, in, in that moment, at some level, I displayed the, the, uh, the presence of Christ in my life. And, and, uh, and, and I meant every word that I said. And that impressed them. And we got a free lunch. You know, uh, if, if you, you know, that's a concrete example. And I'm not saying that's always going to happen or anything like that. But, you know, you want a physical example of, of the reality? So why worry? It, you know, he, Jesus finished up. He says, do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give alms, make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And, uh, and I think that uh, I think we recognize in the depth of our soul the truth of that statement. You know, we, uh, we strive for permanence here, and the reality is there is no permanence here. There is no permanence to this world. There's going to be a recreation, and the old world will pass away, and, and the Lord will establish a new world. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm not saying he's going to destroy everything and destroy all of us and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> there is coming a day 
when the Lord is going to return. We're going to see him as he is in his full glory. And, uh, and we're going to realize that, um, you know, it, it, uh, it is better uh, and, and <clears throat> would have been better if we had recognized that glory, if we had lived for that and not simply for the things of this world. And, uh, you know, there's areas in all of us where we excel in serving God. There's areas in all of us where, you know, we stumble. And there's areas in all of us where we are prone to allow ourselves to worry. And, and so I think that's something that God really wants us to work on. And again, the theme of the week was God supplies our every need. And God does indeed supply our needs. So, <clears throat> Um, some of you are going through really difficult stuff right now. Some people I know personally are going through some really difficult stuff right now in terms of their needs, in terms of looking at their future. Fears and worries are prevalent all around us. Holy cow, it's amazing. But God says, I have you and I will keep you. And it may not go exactly the way we want it, but we have an eternal promise and an expectation. And that doesn't just limit itself to after we die, you know, the old pie in the sky by and by when you die. It is a promise. Here, it is a promise. Now, we can claim it. We can recognize it. And, and you know, one of the things that happens is if we're, uh, if we're really dependent on God, he'll show us the places where he is fulfilling his promises uh, because he knows that we will share that, we will witness that, and we will encourage others with it and point to this passage perhaps that says, you know, do not fear, little flock. Do not worry, but live in confidence because you are the people of God. And uh, in all the world, there is nothing that has greater permanence and greater reality and greater hope and greater joy, no matter what else is going on, than knowing that you are walking in the shadow of the Most High. And, uh, and that's what we're doing, guys. That's what we're here about. That's what we're here for. And that is what God is doing in us and to us and through us and for us. So, Keep in mind, you have been in communion with your Lord. Go forth now and go forth in the strength and in the assurance that the Lord Jesus Christ goes with you. Amen. Have a great day, and hopefully we'll uh, see some of you on Sunday, and hopefully uh, all of you will see us on Sunday, and we will be blessed. And in the meantime, have faith. God will supply your needs. Uh, he loves you more than you can imagine. And, uh, and he will care for you. You'll have to do your part, sure. But do your part with confidence in the Lord. Amen. Bye-bye.